What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and welcome to episode 12 of my Sunday series, The Knife Guy. If you are new to my channel, or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet and you have no idea where you are or who I am, I am a knife enthusiast, knife collector, knife user. I am a knife guy uh, in my own social circle, um, and uh, I have, you know, basically become this way over time, but I'm, I'm obsessed with... Uh, all things folding knives. Now, everybody, you know, generally people watching this um, are also knife guys in their own social setting. I, I have the luxury of having um, a few close friends locally here that I can share um, in these experience with experiences with. But I know a lot of you guys, um, you know, don't don't have that. Basically, your social circle exists online only. And so the idea behind um, these episodes is just. Um, it's, it's me basically picking up knives that are either mine or, um, you know, some of my generous viewers who have lent them to me for review, uh, and content. Um, I just kind of pick stuff up and I, I flip it out and, and, uh, I talk about some experiences that we all share as knife guys, because that's who we are. We're, we're knife guys. Um, and we've all, you know, become individual knife guys. We, we become kind of our own way, but we all share similar um, experiences, definitely. I almost forgot to put the star of the show in uh, in her spot here. We'll go ahead and set her down gently there and make room for this old brass guy here. Something different this week that, um, you know, people, regular viewers of this show might notice is that there are other things on the table besides knives this week. And that's because I kind of thought, you know, I've been talking about gear a lot this week. I unboxed some pry bars, um, I unboxed a flashlight and um, I've got some stuff coming up next week that's going to be a little bit more gear based. Obviously, there's still going to be a ton of knife stuff. This will always be a knife primary channel, but um, something that kind of goes along with this knife world is gear, EDC gear. And I found that um, it was unavoidable, actually. I, I thought myself for a long time, you know, these guys are all into like all these different things. You know, they're into knives, but they're also into like flashlights and these little pry bars and these little mini multi-tools and they're into these weird like single finger knuck things where you like put it I mean it's like a self-defense thing or whatever I keep seeing these pictures on Instagram and Pinterest and whatever Facebook group I'm in or Google in general of these things called pocket dumps where people like show everything that they're carrying on their person you know these people are all seem to be into all this stuff I'm never going to be like that I'm only going to be into knives well at some point very slowly I became interested in more things. And that's because as a knife guy, as somebody who carries a knife as a tool to be prepared for a circumstance in which you will need that tool to make a cut, you find that there are other circumstances in which knives are not the best tools. For me, it was realizing, ah, I don't really wanna use my knife for that. I paid a lot of money for this knife. I paid 100, 200, 300, 400, for this knife, and I really don't want to pry or screw with this, um, so I'm just not gonna do it. And that leaves you in this awkward situation where the person asking for your tool or asking help, asking for help from you, is like, so what, we're just gonna leave it like this? Well, the obvious solution to that is, it's usually something like the Victorinox Cadet with the flathead screwdriver um, or a mini pry bar. Um, that solves two issues, especially if you go the cadet route. One, you have a backup knife for those people who you really don't want using your three or $400 knife, um, to, you know, cut open a tin can. You can hand them their, your $30 cadet or your 20, whatever the, the backup knife costs. Um, or, you know, if you don't want to pry, you want to save the tip of your, of your blade, or you don't want to put unnecessary scratches on your blade, you can simply use a cheap, um, pry tool like this uh, Widgie, um, I think it's called the um, Micro Pry Bar from uh, the Widgie Pry Bar series. Um, that's way easier. And so then you realize, oh, you know, there are benefits to carrying um, additional types of gear. And that's, that's what I found. So then I kind of started to understand it. So then I was a little bit more open and I was like, okay, all right. So what else is there? And for what reason might you carry it? Right. So then I'm starting to look at and some for the same part of my brain that's attracted to these shiny metal objects. Right. You realize that the same type of thing applies between knives and gear. There's regular stuff and then there's really, really flashy stuff that's ultra custom and just kind of insane and really fun to look at. 
it for whatever reason it's very pleasurable to look at groupings of things you know some of these guys i've got friends on my instagram that are so good at showing a display of everyday carry items that all sort of synchronize you know maybe it's an all blue theme or an all red theme or so for but for whatever reason i see that and i'm like oh that's so cool everything matches and it looks so shiny and cool and you know and it's like you don't even realize whether or not you don't even think about whether or not you would need all that stuff but slowly or possibly all at once depending on what type of person you are you realize i want all of that or at least want to experience i at least want to experience it so slowly you acquire things now i've been fortunate i i could never figure out exactly what type of pen i wanted but i i was fortunate enough to have a friend like jeff who i um, just went ahead and got me one and I, I love this thing you know it's a perfect pen for me um but uh I have, you know, slowly realized that I, I do enjoy carrying other things besides knives. And it's kind of like what we talked about um, in, uh, was it last week's episode or at least one of the recent episodes is a, a um, comfort in the feeling of preparedness. It's not just a feeling of preparedness in the knife that you're carrying. Um, it's a, a combination of, you know, feeling of preparedness in all of the different little um, EDC items and tools you're carrying. And by the way, no, I'm not going to carry the um, the XM18 at all. This is going to be a safe queen. Um, but I'm also going to switch the pocket clip. But even if I was going to carry it, it would this pocket clip would be in the other position. I just haven't changed it yet. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a combination of all the things that you're carrying, giving you that feeling of preparedness. For some people, it's it's an it's just a knife. There are definitely people who are like, nope, not interested in anything else. Don't need anything else except for a knife. My knife does everything. I don't care if I dick up the um, the blade or the tip or I put a scratch on it. I don't care. Then there's people who are just a little outside of that. Knife and pry bar or a knife and backup knife. And my backup knife is some sort of multi tool thing. Or I carry a knife and a pry bar and a flashlight, um, a little EDC size flashlight. By the way. I love this thing. Absolutely think that this is like the coolest thing. <laughs> I'm having so much fun playing with that, um, that uh, EGTAC D3C. Uh, but, you know, I understand why people like flashlights. Holy cow, I get it. I got sucked into that so fast. I mean, you guys remember when I unboxed it, I was like, flashlight? Why, why would somebody spend so much money on a flashlight? You know, like it's just... Like I got, I got one upstairs. It's like 20 bucks and you just, you turn it on and it shines and you turn it off and then whatever. And then you're like, ah, but they make them out of titanium. Oh, that's cool. And they're like really small, like EDC size. They even have pocket clips on them. That's cool. Ooh, that one's got cool, like textured, you know, titanium on it or whatever. And what's this about lumens? Oh man, they like, they really light up. Holy cow. Some of those are really bright. Wow. You can get that much power in a little, and then you, you start thinking, you start thinking to yourself, do I run into situations throughout the day where I would need a flashlight? I feel like I have. I feel like there have been a few situations, maybe two or three times a week where I could use a flashlight. It sure would be nice to have one. And, you know, man, it would be really fun to have like a really impressive flashlight for somebody who doesn't know better. Like, hey, watch this. And you light up the whole, you know, whatever. And you start, you, you start convincing yourself that you need it, right? And then, so then you, then it becomes this whole new thing where you get to do the, the whole ritualistic search you know, as I call it, and I, I get euphoric searching for stuff like this. So I'm like, all right, I've decided I want a flashlight now. So what are the companies out there that people like? So you start watching reviews, you start learning about the different levels, you know, the production level. And then there's, of course, there's a custom level and you start learning. And so you kind of figure out what you do and don't need and where the point of diminish, or you, you, you try to pinpoint that point of diminishing returns and how it applies to you and like what you're looking for and what you're attracted to visually. And you try to make that all sync up. And then if you're successful, you end up with what you want. And then whether or not you actually need that thing in your everyday life kind of goes out the window. It was, I mean, all we're doing is the same thing over and over again. We're just looking for another excuse to do that thing where we hunt down what we perceived to be the perfect piece of gear for what we're looking for. And then what inevitably ends up happening is it opens up that first thing. If you enjoy it, it opens up this gateway where you're like, well, now I want another flashlight. Now I kind of want to do this. I want to spend a little bit more, you know. The same exact thing could be said for pry bars. This is a basic pry bar. It's probably the most basic pry bar that's out there. Um, they do get very custom. I saw a lot of you guys, if you're friends with um, Todd Begg on Instagram, you saw that crazy mirror finished damasteel uh, giant pry bar that he made with the, that the anodized pocket clip on there. 
I'm gonna guess that was a four or five hundred dollar um, pry bar at least. They did the same world applies to all this stuff. Nux, yeah, definitely the Lucas Burnley Nux, those really custom crazy things. I mean, this is like a forty dollar brass um, no name bottle opener slash Nux, you know. But you can definitely get some crazy looking custom ones. Absolutely, little um, tools like this. There are definitely custom multi-tools and crazy, you know, little pocket drivers. I like the Hinder Armors tool, you know. This steel one is a little bit heavy, but they make them in titanium, but it just holding one bit. I, I you know, I, I would opt for like a Phillips head bit and something like this. It's just a setup to take apart the handle screws on the uh, XM18. But um, having this in maybe just a little bit lighter and attached to um, one of these, these little... Um, deep carry um, uh, suspension clips. Oh yeah, I could totally, I totally understand that. And you know, it's it's fun. And then then you end up with like this theme of, you convince yourself you need all this stuff or you then you justify it, right? So you've got all this stuff. Sorry, trying to turn my camera correctly. And you know, you've, you've in either intentionally or unintentionally kind of synchronized it all, you know, it's all based on your style and your theme. You know, if it were if it were me, I think everything would be perfectly monochromatic, despite how much I really enjoy this copper flamed pen. You know, it's just the same the same sickness that we have for knives is 100 percent applicable um, a lot of times to a lot of this gear. And I, I think a lot of us share that. I'm not saying every single one of us shares this, but I mean, it's it's like whatever it is that attracts us to small metal tools that have you know, more or less exotic materials in them, but all, you know, perform a specific task. You know, a lot of us were taught growing up that there are certain tools that you use for certain tasks. So as we go about our daily lives, a feeling of having, you know, every every tool that could reasonably be, it, it, um, you know, may be needed throughout the day on our person in a small, lightweight, maybe tactical design, you know, that I, it's, it just kind of fits into pockets and it's all got its own place. And it's just, it's a good feeling. And it's also kind of fun to show that stuff to people, you know, like I, I remember, you know, my dad and my dad's friends on job sites, they always had like cool, intricate, weird little tools attached to them. Now, these were guys that were much older. It was, it was before, you know, this sort of, um, this world opened up with Instagram and all this. I mean, so these were like super basic things, but it was always interesting to see, you know, these guys that would like on their lunch breaks, they would empty their pockets or, you know, maybe after work they would, they would, um, you know, kick back and have something to drink and they, they'd empty their pockets or whatever, throw it with their wallet on a table. And they'd have all these, all these weird little things, box cutters, and they'd have their little key rings and they'd, some of them would have little pocket pry bars or, and I was just like, Oh, cool. What is all that stuff? You know? And in one way, shape, or form, you know, we, we all have some type of experience when we're younger, I think, where we're interested in tools and blades and just basically catalysts that we use to complete a task. And then we enjoy finding, you know, these things that kind of fit our style and, and that we can justify. I, you know, I don't know. It, we're, we're all gearheads. You know, we, we love knives, but we a lot of us love the pens and the pry bars and the knucks and, the, you know, all this different stuff. In fact... What's what's not on this table is uh, some like a handkerchief and um, what else do people carry? You know, people carry a whole uh, like fidget spinners. <laughs> I'll tell. I can confidently say I am not into fidget spinners. Um, that's something that that's like outside of a utilitarian thing. But some people are. You know, um, some people like to carry stuff like that. They like to carry worry stones or whatever. I find that interesting. I find that this, whatever this, this, this thing is, I call it a sickness, but it's just basically the part of me and, and the part of you guys that's attracted to stuff like that. You know, we like um, these different intricate pieces of metal that do different things. And, and if we can find a way to carry them on our person, then we absolutely will. 100%. That's really going to be all I can say about this topic. I uh, I just thought it might be um, something fun and relatable and something you guys might be interested in. But uh, in any case, that's going to be pretty much it for today's episode, guys. If you enjoyed this topic and this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives and gear uh, that's either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check that stuff out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.